Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to see analysis and design of the fence section according to your code 2. For the analysis of the plant section, we will be focused on the ultimate uh, design bending moment, MED, that has to be resisted by either the flange or both the flange and the web. It means that the nail axis can either lie in the flange or in the web. In the first case, where the stress block lies within the flange, we have S, which is the component of the stress block, will be smaller than HF. HF is the thickness of the flange. Uh, BF will be the width of the flange. D will represent the effective depth. AS, of course, is the area of steel reinforcement. And BW will be the width of the web. So in the first case, we have the stress block or the compressive forces that will be carried by only this portion of the concrete. And uh, the remaining part will work in tension. Uh, if the bending moment will be higher than the capacity of the flange, then we will have the second case where the neutral axis will have to lie below the flange in order for a portion of the web to work in compression as well. So we can say that the stress block lies below the flange or in the web, and S will be bigger than HF. Again, HF was the thickness of the flange. Here we will have uh, some other parameters that will be added to our stress job. We'll have two lever arms called Z1 and Z2. We will have a new force in the uh, web that will work in compression. We'll have the force developed in concrete of the flange in compression. And uh, we will have the SW parameter, which is another component of the added stress job. We are going to see all of them in detail in the following slide. But let's come back to the first case where the stress block lies within the flange. So for this case, when the nozzle axis lies in the flange, the section can be considered as a rectangular section with a uh, breadth of BF. So basically, the whole uh, this shape can be converted into a normal rectangular section. And here we will have one dimension, which will be the overall depth of the section, the T section or the flange section. And BF will be the parameter that we are uh, discussing here. So the width of the flange and the height of the overall section will be uh, as if it was a rectangular section. In order for the stress block to lie below the flange, it it requires that S to be bigger than HF. So if, or if the ultimate uh, design bending moment is higher than the moment resistance of the flange, it means that the neutral axis should be extended below the flange, or we need to have a section with bigger dimensions so that uh, the flange can carry all the design moments. So the diagram will be as we saw in the first slide. So the stress block will have two forces that are developed in compression. One comes from the concrete in the flange and the other the concrete which is found in the web. And in order to be in equilibrium, of course, this has to be balanced by the force of steel in tension. There will be two lever arms, Z1 and Z2, which connect Z2 is uh, the one developed from force of concrete in the web with uh, FSP. And uh, the Z1 will be force of concrete in the flange, uh, which will be linked with the force of uh, steel in tension at the bottom. And then let's see some uh, examples. In example one, it is shown a T section in the figure with these dimensions, BF 450 millimeter, effective depth 400 millimeter, width of the web 210 millimeter, and the thickness of the flange as 110 millimeters. This section is required to resist an ultimate bending moment of 300 millimeter meter, and it is required to find the area of bending reinforcement using concrete class. 30 megapascal and uh, FYK 
or still reinforcement as 500 and above. In order to solve this type of problems, we need to firstly identify whether the neutral axis lies in the flange or in the well. To, to do so, we need to find the moment capacity of the flange, which can be found by this formula. So NF will be the moment of resistance of the flange, FCF times Z1. FCF will be the force in compression developed in the flange, and Z1 will be the same parameter as we saw in the previous slide, which will be equal to the effective depth minus HF divided by 2. So the force that will be developed in uh, the flange compression will be equal to 0 0.567 times characteristic strength of concrete times the width of the flange and the height of the flange. If you do all this multiplication, we will see that the uh, moment capacity of the flange will be 290 kN meter. Then we can say that since the moment resistance of the flange is smaller than uh, MED or the design moment, the stress block needs to lie below the flange. So we need a portion of the web to work in compression as well in order to, to balance this load. Thus, we can draw the stress block as here. So now we are sure that the stress block or the neutral axis will lie uh, below the flange. So in this uh, diagram, we can identify all the variables that we are going to use for calculating the area of steel reinforcement. In order to exactly identify the depth of the neutral axis or the variable x, we can equalize it with 0.45 times effective depth, and it will be 0.45 times 400, 180 millimeters. There is a condition that if x will be smaller or equal to 0.45d, then no compression reinforcement will be required for the flank section. In case that we would like or if we would want to have compression reinforcement as well, then we can uh, change this value and not equalize it with 0.45d, but we, it can be even bigger. Then uh, from the stress block, we know that S is 0.8 times X, and from here we can derive the value of uh, X, which is 180, and then the overall value of uh, S will be HF, which is 110, plus the part of the web that works in compression, or SW. So uh, the only unknown in this equation here is SW, and it can be found as 34 millimeter. Then we know that from equilibrium, all the forces have to be equal with each other. So to the left, we have the forces that are working in tension, which is only the area of reinforcing steel. And to the right, we have the force of compression developed in the flange and the force in compression developed in the web. For this reason, we can uh, write the formulas for each of these forces. And we know that FSP will be equal to 0 0.87 times FYK times AS, where FYK is the characteristic strength of steel. And AS will be, of course, the area of steel reinforcement, which is the unknown parameter here. Then for FCF will be equal to 0 0.567 times characteristic strength of concrete times width of the flange and height of the flange. And the other part for FCW will be similar, 0 0.567 and FCK, which comes because of concrete, BW, which is the width of the web, and SW will be the stress block uh, parameter only for the web. So from here, we can uh, isolate AS and solve for AS. And area of steel required will be 2,215 millimeters squared. If we would like to convert this area into number of bars, if we would use 25 millimeter diameter bar, then we, we should provide 5H25, or 5 bars with 25 millimeter diameter. And the overall area provided will be 2,450 millimeters squared. And this is the end of example one.
In example two, we are asked to determine the ultimate moment of resistance of the T section shown in the figure below, where uh, concrete has a compressive strength of 25 newton per millimeter square of the Pascal and uh, steel 500 megapascal. The width of the flange is 450 millimeter, so width of the web is 300 millimeter, effective depth is given at 750. HF is given at 150 millimeter, and the overall area of reinforcement is 2,592 millimeters square. Again, even in this example, we need firstly to determine the depth of the neutral axis. Uh, there is another way that we can uh, determine the depth of neutral axis. Instead of calculating the uh, moment capacity of the flange, we can also calculate the forces that are developed in the flange and in the web. So for the flange compressive force, we can use this formula again, which is the same as we saw in the first example, 0 0.567 FCK BFHF, and we will see that the force of uh, compression developed in the flange will be 957 kN. Then to calculate the tensile force in steel, we have this formula, 0 0.87 FYK AF, and if you do all this multiplication, we'll get a value of 1,128 kN. As you can see from this result, uh, they are not equal. It means that there must be something uh, else to be added for FCF in order to equalize and in order to be in equilibrium. So because FSC is bigger than FCF for force developed in steel bar is bigger than the force developed in concrete, it means that the neutral axis lies below the flange. It means that there must be a force developed in the web so that the whole uh, section will be in equilibrium. For this reason, we can continue with calculating the force of concrete developed in the web, so force of compression developed in the web, and uh, if you do all the substitution, we'll get, let's say, a value of uh, 4.25 S minus 150 kilometer. So the only thing now to be calculated will be the variable S. And uh, if we draw the stress block, it is the same as in previous examples. We need to calculate the parameter S, which can be shown also here. In order to find this one, again, we need to go for equilibrium. If we write the equilibrium condition that forces in tension will be equal to the forces in compression, we can uh, find the variable S, which was the only unknown from this part, and S will be 190 millimeters. We can also check whether there would have been the need to have uh, compression enforcement as well. So from uh, S is equal to 0.8x, we can find the real depth of the neutral axis, and we can check this value with the maximum allowable value in order not to have compression reinforcement, which is uh, 248 millimeter. Our given value is 238 millimeter, so uh, there is no need for compression reinforcement. And in order now to calculate the ultimate moment of resistance of the section, we can uh, take the moment about uh, tension steel, but before going to step six, in step five, we can substitute the unknown uh, S that we calculated for 190, and we will have the force that is developed in the web as 170 kilonewton. So if we take moment about tension steel, we will have the force uh, developed in the flange times the lever arm plus the force developed in the web times the lever arm and at the end we will have the ultimate moment of resistance of the section at 590 kN meter and this one concludes the example too. This was all for flange section design. Thank you and see you in next